10 days. Yes, you heard me right, 10 days until Gamescom and 10 days until we can finally see what Tailwoods have been hiding from us for the last 8 years. But before all that, we have another developer blog talking about sieges. Now, you may remember, they already did a siege developer blog. Well, here's another one, apparently. Now we're just going into repeating the dev blogs, apparently. But without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Of course, in Bannerlord, they're wanting to take the sieges and turn them up a notch, taking them from the rather simplistic sieges of Warband and bringing them into a more immersive and more hands-on approach throughout Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. There's an active back and forth between the defenders and the attackers, trying to gain advantage upon one another and hamper each other's progression. Now, this is not just in the battle itself, though, as you would expect with a game like this, but it's actually on the world map. Not only can you go into the battles, use these siege weaponries in the game itself, but when you're on the overworld map, you'll have a lot of options of things you can do in order to help or discourage someone else. When you besiege a settlement, there is a camp that is being set up. Now you can see this on the world map, it looks nice, there's a few tents and you can actually see some of the siege engines that are being built by the attackers. These siege engines will be able to be built by not only the attackers but also the defenders, whether you have ballistas on the walls or trebuchets down in your camp attacking these bombarded settlements. Now, talking about bombardment, there is a bombardment phase that takes place on the world map. And this means that when you're actually in the world map, you're able to set up this bombardment phase in order to do damage to the enemy's castle before you go into it, hurting their troops, battering down bits of their walls as well. So when you actually go into the battle, they are a lot weaker and it should be a lot easier for you to attack that settlement when you go into the battle itself. You can have the option to build siege towers and battering rams, although these are only actually brought to the front and used during the assault phase, which is actually the in battle moments in the third person when you're commanding your guys. You can't use these siege towers and battering rams outside of this in the bombardment phase. That is more to ranged siege engines like catapults, trebuchets, ballistas and so forth. But what ranged siege engines can you use and what are their advantages and disadvantages? Well, things like ballistas will be better for whittling down the enemy's troops, meaning that if you put a lot of these and use them in the bombardment phase, once you go into the assaulting mode, they're going to have less troops on the battlefield. Things like trebuchets Trebuchets will be able to dominate the defender's machines and walls, but they're pretty expensive to do. So if you decide to go the trebuchet route, make sure you have enough resources in order to use them, but also it means that when you go into the assault mode, the defenders will have less siege engines against you, but also their walls will be weaker, for making it easier for getting up or through them. But you don't have to do any of this bombardment stuff, you can choose to pull back your men and just wait. If you're attacking, you can starve out the enemy. Deciding not to do this bombardment phase means your reserve resources and of course less chance of you taking casualties yourself. You can starve them out and then of course they'll be weaker anyway. But what about the defending side? Well, you can also do the same and just cower and hide in your keeps or in your houses. Not necessarily building these siege engines for your walls and attacking the enemies in the bombardment phase but just hiding, hoping that they don't do too much damage to your walls because you'll lose less men, but they've got more of a hit on your structures themselves. But now players have this complete control on the deployment of siege engines on the campaign map and not just in the assault phase that we've seen in lots of the gameplay. But that's pretty much it for this week's developer blog. I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. 10 days, guys, and we're getting some really cool new gameplay. Fingers crossed. Make sure you leave a like on the video if you haven't already. But until then, guys, I will see you in the next one.